In this video, I'll explain the difference between obverse and reverse techniques in Taekwondo. The words obverse and reverse in the name of a Taekwondo technique describe how the technique relates to its stance. Now, in Korean, the word for obverse is baro and reverse is pandai. You can perform your techniques such as blocks or hand attacks with your left hand or your right hand and some stances can be described as a left stance or a right stance. Now an obverse technique is simply one in which you do on the same side as your stance. So for example a left block or attack with a left stance or a right block or attack with your right stance. And a reverse technique is done on the opposite side. So you'd be doing a left block or attack with your right stance or a right block or attack with your left stance. Now this is easier to understand if I show you a few examples. Here is an example of a walking stance obverse punch. As you can see, the punch is done with the right fist and the stance is a right walking stance because the right leg is in front. So this makes it an obverse punch because you have the punch and the stance on the same side. Now here's an example of a reverse punch. Was that meant to be funny? That was just an obverse punch in reverse. Here's a proper example. So in this example, we still have a right walking stance, but the punch is executed with the left fist. So this makes it a reverse punch because the punch is on the opposite side to the stance. But it's not always as easy to work out whether a technique is obverse or reverse. Take this example. We have an L stance punch, but is it an obverse or a reverse punch? Some people will make the mistake in believing that this is an obverse punch because the punch is on the same side as the front leg. But with L stance, it's the rear leg that determines whether it's a left or right stance. So in this case, we have a right L stance and a left punch, making it a reverse punch. So what determines whether a stance is left or right? Well, it's the weight distribution that's the predominant factor. In stances where one leg carries more weight than the other, the leg carrying the most weight will determine whether it's a left or right stance. So in stances such as L stance, rear foot stance and vertical stance, the rear leg will determine whether it's a left or right stance. With one leg stance, it's obvious which leg carries the most weight. And with X stance, there are two versions. One where the leg carrying the most weight will be at the rear and the other where it's at the front but the leg carrying the most weight will be the one with the foot with the heel firmly on the ground. But some stances have 50-50 weight distribution, so we cannot use that same criteria. So in this case, we look to see which legs in front, and that will determine whether it's a left or right stance. So in cases like walking stance, low stance, fixed stance, and diagonal stance, whichever legs in front determines whether it's a left or right stance. There are also stances which have 50-50 weight distribution but are completely symmetrical so neither the left leg or the right leg is in front. For example, close stance, parallel stance and sitting stance. These stances cannot be described as being left or right. So when we do techniques with these stances, we cannot describe the technique as being obverse or reverse. Well, I hope this hasn't become too confusing. Just to make sure, let's have a look at a few examples. In this example, we have a flat fingertip high thrust being performed in a low stance. Now the low stance has 50-50 weight distribution, so we need to look at which leg's in front. The left leg is in front, which makes it a left low stance. And as the technique is being performed with the right flat fingertip, that makes it a reverse thrust. So the technique is a low stance, flat fingertip, high reverse thrust. In this example, we have a palm upward block being performed in a rear foot stance. Now the rear foot stance has more weight on the rear leg, so this is a right rear foot stance. And the block is being performed with the left palm. So 
So this makes it a reverse block. So the technique would be called rear foot stance, palm reverse upward block. In this example, we have a punch being performed in fixed stance. Now the fixed stance has 50-50 weight distribution. So the front leg determines whether it's a left or right stance. And as we have the left leg in front, this is a left fixed stance. And since the punch is done with a left fist, that makes it an obverse punch. So the name of the technique will be fixed stance, obverse punch. And in this example, we have a knife and strike being performed in sitting stance. But the sitting stance cannot be called a left or right sitting stance because it's completely symmetrical. So in this case, we can just call the technique a sitting stance, left knife hand strike. Well, I hope you found the information useful to you. And I will be producing more videos describing how we name techniques in Taekwondo. For example, how we label them as high, middle and low, how we define front techniques, side techniques, etc. So if you want to find out more, don't forget to subscribe.